Trouble mounts for U.S. President Donald Trump as the U.S. Congress is likely to probe a report which suggested that he had instructed his former lawyer Michael Cohen to lie to the Congress. Two members of the newly empowered Democrats in the House of Representatives vowed to investigate a report that Trump directed Cohen to lie about negotiations over a real estate project in Moscow during the 2016 elections. The second Trump Kim summit might take place towards the end of February. That's the word coming in from the White House. The announcement comes after top North Korean official and chief negotiator Kim Yong Chol met U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and President Donald Trump in Washington, D.C. U.S. Chief Antonio Guterres has also earlier said that it's high time the U.S. and North Korea start their denuclearization talks again seriously. Just a day ago, President Donald Trump had called North Korea an extraordinary threat. U.S. President Trump will make a major announcement on the government shutdown and the border wall from the White House today. Trump and Democrats are still at loggerheads on the funding for a wall along the Mexican border as a price of ending the shutdown. The announcement will happen at 3 p.m. local time. Thousands of Federal workers are going without pay as a shutdown enters this 29th day today. Democratic House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has accused the White House of a dangerous leak but about her planned trip to Afghanistan. This comes after President Trump cancelled the military plane that was to take Pelosi and a congressional delegation on a foreign trip. A Trump instead is suggested she travelled by a commercial plane, Pelosi said. She would have done just that, but now the plan is foiled after the U.S. administration leaked that she was traveling commercially. The White House has denied leaking any such information. Iran's foreign minister has mocked the U.S. national security advisor's calls for a strike on Iran, taking the help of the viral 10-year challenge meme that is doing the rounds of social media. Mohammad Zarif tweeted the titles of two separate articles by John Bolton from 2009 and 2019. Both the articles called for strikes on Iran. Zarif wrote in the post, same bull, same bully, same delusion. Earlier this week, a report surfaced that Bolton had asked the Pentagon in September to prepare military options for an attack on Iran. Five suspects appeared in a Kenyan magistrate's court for the hearing on the attack by a Somali militant group on a Nairobi hotel that killed 21 people. The five suspects were ordered to be detained for a month to complete the investigation. One of the suspects is a woman, Al-Shabaab, an affiliate of the Al-Qaeda group, has taken responsibility of the attack over U.S. President Trump's decision to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Now, 16 Kenyans, including an American survivor of the September 11th Al-Qaeda attack on the U.S., were among the dead in the Hotel 14 attack. Hundreds of protesters in Zimbabwe were arrested during anti-government protests on public order charges. The unrest broke out after President Emerson Mengwagwa raised the fuel prices by whooping. In fact, a huge margin of 150%. Lawyers said that activists say that the toll was much higher and that security forces used violence and carried out mass arrests. The internet in Zimbabwe was also blacked out for much of the day until authorities began gradually lifting the ban that had disabled some electronic communications in the country. The UN Human Rights Office has called on Zimbabwe's government on Friday to stop the crackdown against protesters and excessive use of force by security forces. The spokeswoman of the UN Human Rights also denounced alleged intimidation and harassment by security forces, beatings by police and the shutting down of internet. Protests against fuel price hikes in Zimbabwe started earlier this week. The high inflation poses a major challenge for President Emerson Mengwagwa, who replaced longtime leader Robert Mugabe and had promised to repair the economy. Elon Musk is cutting Tesla's workforce by 7%, which is more than 3,000 jobs. This due to the fact that Tesla is under pressure to limit spending to make electric cars more affordable. 
for the mass market. Tesla CEO Musk has called this the most challenging year in company's history. While Tesla has succeeded in scaling up the output of Model 3, Musk has warned of a very difficult road ahead. Tesla shares fell as much as 13% in its last trading session. Colombia's ELN Rebel Group was responsible for the attack uh, bomb car attack in a, a police academy that killed at least 21 and injured 54 others. The car bomb explosion rocked the Colombian capital of Bogota. The attack was planned over about 10 months. The ELN Rebel Group is made of uh, some 2,000 fighters and uh, is considered a terrorist organization by the US and European Union. The group was founded by a radical Catholic priests and has fought more than a dozen governments since 1964. Chinese telecommunication giant Huawei is facing a ban on supplying equipment to Canadian 5G networks. Meanwhile, a U.S. court has reopened criminal proceedings against a telecom giant on the allegation that Huawei stole intellectual property from its U.S. business partners. And also Oxford University in the U.K. has suspended research grants and funding donations from Huawei. In a major scandal, the Swedish body that awards the Nobel Prize for Literature has announced that one of its members would leave after she leaked the names of winners. This had led to the body not awarding a Peace Prize for Literature last year. Now, this was found after an investigation into the leaking of the winner's names. Her husband, John Claude Arnold, ran a culture institute before that had dealings with the academy. He has also been accused of leaking the names of the winners of Nobel Prize on several occasions. More than 30,000 teachers striking in Los Angeles rallied near City Hall a day after negotiations between the teachers' union and district authorities resumed. More than 30,000 Los Angeles educators began striking on January 14, making it the biggest teacher strike in 30 years. The teachers have demanded an increase in pay, smaller classroom sizes and more support staff. Sources say the dates for the uh, general elections are likely to be announced in the first week of March. Election Commission is in the process of deciding the number of phases and the months in which polling would be held. There is a possibility that the Election Commission will continue to hold assembly elections in the states of Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh along with the Lok Sabha polls. Months ahead of India's general elections, uh, top opposition leaders have gathered in Kolkata for a mega rally. Preparations have been made for the massive show of strength, which would be led by West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee. The leader will be joined by former Uttar Pradesh Chief, uh, State Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav and former Indian Prime Minister Devi Gora. However, uh, Congress Party President Rahul Gandhi won't be attending the rally. A rally is being seen as a show of solidarity against the Narendra Modi government. The scheduled rallies of BJP in West Bengal have been deferred by two days owing to its national president's ill health. Party officials said Amit Shah will start rallying from January 22nd. Shah has been admitted to the All India Institute of Medical Sciences with swine flu. The party also said that Amit Shah is doing well and will be discharged in a day or two. Shah's rally will follow just days after West Bengal Chief Minister's uh, mega-opposition rally. Several houses in the southern uh, suburbs of Beirut have been ravaged by a winter storm that has been battering Lebanon in recent days. The flood has washed away dozens of fishing boats. Tens of thousands of Syrian refugees in Lebanon camps are bearing the brunt of it as the camps have turned into a swamp due to the storm, with water entering the tents.
Moscow is now covered with tons of snow and ice. Despite more than 30 centimeters of snow, the road traffic as well as the public transportation continue to work seamlessly. Moscow's established a system of snow removal involves people working around the clock. Over 7,000 units of snow plowing the vehicles crisscross Moscow streets to clear the city of snow and ensure safe driving conditions. There are 35 ice melting facilities in Moscow. Spectators in the U.S. state of Maine were delighted to see an ice disc floating and rotating on a river in Maine. An ice disc is a natural phenomenon that occurs in rivers when accelerating water creates a force that breaks off a chunk of ice and continually turns it, grinding it against the surrounding to form a perfect circle. Locals in the Westbrook city brave freezing temperatures to watch the spectacle. Even birds clung on to the moving frozen disc. Main media reported that the 100-yard disc was slowly rotating and gaining in size. Turkish Air Force teams rescued four people stranded in a snow blizzard on a mountain in western Turkey. Heavy snowfall caused havoc in eastern Turkey, leaving the Karilova district isolated. Winter service vehicles and cleared the roads amid heavy snowfall that blanketed the entire village. Many houses in the village were buried under the two meters of snow. Schools have also been ordered to close. 281 villages in the region remain stranded due to the weather. Australia is sweating uh, through record-breaking heatwave now. Authorities estimate that the country have at least experienced five of its ten warmest days on record yet. Extreme heatwave has resulted in wildlife deaths, bushfires and a rise in hospital admissions. In New South Wales, Queensland, South Australia and Victoria are among the worst affected states. Thousands of Swiss students skipped class and marched on Geneva Street, urging authorities to take action against climate change. 4,000 students demonstrated on the streets, chanting, we are hotter than the climate. They also waved uh, placards with the message in less words, more actions. Swiss students called for a halt to the use of fossil fuel, implementation of policies to ensure a net greenhouse gas emission to be zero by 2030, and also a climatic state of emergency to be declared.